Um, what I want to talk about is a quick introduction to Meta. Uh, Meta is a design language uh, for representing VLSI designs that uh, actually we, I, I work at Barefoot Networks and uh, we've used that in the design of our latest chip. I've used that uh, actually for many, many years uh, over for, for many designs. Um, how many of you are, are from either familiar with Verilog or have taken a VLSI design class or worked on chips, anybody? Okay, all right, so we get that, no, some. All right, so um, basically, let's start out with just representations of the signals. You know, a signal is just a name, okay? You know, that re represents a one-bit signal. For a multi-bit wide signal, you give it bit subscripts, uh, either, you know, high to low or just the bit width. Uh, and all of this is similar to Verilog. Uh, you know, you can have strided vectors, uh, you can have arrays of signals, you know, this would be a, an array of 16 32-bit signals, uh, there's a strided array. Uh, now, signals can be used in expressions, and expressions can, you know, as, essentially have operators. Those operators can be primitive gates that, you know, actually, you know, modules that you put on a chip, or they can be behavioral. All right, so here's a, a three input and of three signals, this is one bit wide. All right, if I call it, uh, you know, and then, you know, let's say if I call the same thing, I can then produce a named signal with it. This will be, you know, this, this name is then available inside the module to use uh, in other places. Uh, if I want to make everything 32 bits wide, I do that. Uh, let's say for you know, behavioral sorts of things, let's say uh, logical not, you know, just the slash in front. Uh, concatenating, you know, a bunch of smaller signals to make a wider one is uh, merged with the ampersand. Uh, uh, and um, basically, this is the way you write. Uh, the first thing that happens in kind of the parser is it goes to an internal representation, which we call desugared, uh, where everything kind of goes to a more functional notation. So bit extract is, is pulling bits out of a signal. So extract from you know, the signal, there's the signal name and its width, uh, low bit position, and, and, the, and the expression width. So foo 11 down to 4 is an 8-bit wide thing which would internally be represented as extract sig foo 32, you know, four, starting from bit 4, 8 bits wide. And eventually, you know, when the design is instantiated and built out, uh, this signal name will be, rep will be replaced with the object, you know, representing the signal, and there's, there's manipulation on from there. So this is just the basics of, of, the, um, of the language, and so far, there's not really a whole lot different from Verilog. Uh, the one thing that is a little bit different is that uh, this, this, this is gate input input, you know, there's a direct analog to Lisp function input input, and a, a Lisp being a functional language producing outputs, gates produce outputs too. So there's kind of a direct analog between uh, kind of the function, uh, functional thinking in Lisp and the, uh, or any other functional language, and the language of kind of inputs, outputs in designs. Uh, so here's an example that, that uh, it's a little bit bigger example that uses uh, behavioral primitives. And you can nest primitives just like you do in any functional language. Uh, actually, this is the, uh, uh, the program counter logic for a Spark processor. You know, so this is register, there's the clock. Uh, this is an if-then-else construct. If the jump is taken, you, know, you do this, which has some further muxing. If it's not taken, well, you might be taking a trap. Otherwise, there's just the incremented PC. But th anyway, this is just kind of a representation of how designs are built. Uh, and actually, this is, this is real code that I built a real design with uh, years back. Uh, so y y it encourages you to kind of think functionally and, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, think in terms of the logic of integer processing, uh, which has a direct analog to, uh, uh, to, you know, to gates and wires. Uh, now, so far, other than kind of guiding you a little bit in syntax, there's kind of very little to differentiate it from Verilog. But the fact is that this is embedded in Lisp, and, and the fact that it, it, you know, it has that means that you know, we have the facility to kind of manipulate the language inside. Uh, and actually, I've got one more thing to do before I, before I get into that aspect of it. Uh, let's see. Okay, you, uh, you, know, you can build a module with inputs and outputs that contain you know, a, bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch of individual uh, you know, expressions. Uh, now here is an example of another module where I've written a macro that manipulates, uh, you know, that, that manipulates this stuff to provide iteration. And this iteration construct directly calls on loop. Uh, if, 
following def meta array, if, if an expression begins with with or for, it's meant as an iterator. So there's one dimension of iteration, here's a second dimension, and all of these variables are bound and then get substituted in anything inside of square brackets or bit subscripts. Uh, you know. All right, and kind of one last thing, the nice thing about it is, uh, let's say, I can go to here and <laughs> macro expand <laughs> and, and, see what you, and you see what you get directly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was I going to say? Let me, let me do this with a little bit smaller example. Let's say uh, this was an example of a, uh, uh, just something where I did a uh, 1024 input AND as a binary tree of two input ANDs. And this was a two level uh, iteration. You know, the first level has 512, the next one half of that, half of that. So that's just a two dimensional iteration. If I do it again where I've reduced it to levels of four, I guess we're still, we're still a little bit too wide for the screen. But, uh, but anyway, you can see what you get. And uh, so this, this gives us the ability to do actually very powerful things uh, and make them, you know, you know, kind of make them user visible. For example, we have, we have a, a big macro that generates configuration registers, of which there are millions on the chip, and it, provide, you know, it gives them an address space and a whole mechanism for you know, a data bus that, you know, that writes it and another whole bit data bus that it reads onto, and this is all automatically generated. And if you want to see what it produces, just hit macro expand. In fact, I was doing that just the other day, you know, to see, you know, see all right, what code uh, actually gets produced. So, uh, but basically, this is a way to give you, this gives us a much more powerful design language than everybody else who has to live with Verilog. And, and everybody who uses Verilog has some sort of iterator they wrap around it. I mean, TI had Veripearl, and everybody has their own little thing, but none of them give you kind of the native ability of you know, manipulating code that kind of understands itself, which is inherent to Lisp. Um, you, uh, you joined Barefoot Networks. <laughs> Barefoot Networks is my company. The, the <laughs> so if, if you want to use, you know, we are, essentially we build chips. And uh, you know that's that's my purpose is to you know is you know I build chips and to build chips you got to build tools and uh, and you know so I'm not in the you know not in the business of making this available and supporting and stuff like that you know we're you know we're building big router chips with it yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, oh, it's just it's yes. It, other than it's in intellectually interesting, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. So is is it? Sorry. Where is it? It's Clash. Clash. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, actually, let, let's talk afterwards. I want to find out more about it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have an example of uh, some actual network hard work in the Um, we, uh, you know, we've we've recently, you know, we have we have working in our lab a 6.5 terabit router chip, and actually a big portion of that chip was designed using this language. Yeah. So it's a 11 billion transistor chip. You know, we've, you know, Do you know um, it generally takes about five times less lines of code to do this versus Verilog. And there's, um, and you know, we did this for both behavioral and we implemented a lot of, a lot of pieces of the design and custom gate level. And when you do that, there's just a lot more level of detail and, you know, multiple buffered versions of things and array subscripts. So there's a lot more iteration. And you know that you know, essentially this handles this much better. Essentially, the one way to express the power of a language is how complicated a thing can you do before your program just kind of falls apart and gets rusty, and you're you're afraid to change it because you don't understand it anymore. You know, the more powerful your language, the more clearly it lets you think, and you know you can do more complicated things before you kind of hit the wall. And that's that's kind of a way to express you know what we what we think we have the power to do with this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, not synthesis, but kind of hardware directed. 
uh, you know, the primitives in this language are all kind of hardware focused. Uh, you know, add, mux, register, things like that. You know, Verilog has always blah, 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 or clock rising, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's easy to kind of write pieces of spaghetti that kind of don't have a direct analog to hardware. Here it kind of shoehorns designers into kind of thinking more hardware focused. And actually as such, maybe it's not good. If you're doing something that's really, really abstract and behavioral, maybe, maybe this isn't the right language. Although there are other constructs that, that kind of address that, which I'm not going into. But, it's, but it, I would call it hardware focused. And it, I do have a simulator that goes with this. That, and, you know, the, that lisp functional, you know, you could think of that as that's direct. You make those things functions, that's simulation. Yeah. Well, you have to compile it into hardware. Right. Yeah. I'm just yeah. 